All right, ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. And for those of you in Australia, happy Australia Day. Now, there was something I saw in the comments on YouTube and also in Discord. Uh, Valentino's saliva, you know, pimp daddy. Uh, the love potions that are in Hasbun Hotel are apparently made from his saliva. So when he's kissing Angel Dust, he's actually coking him up on the love potion, which is the poison that keeps Angel Dust and anyone else that consumes it uh, hooked. It's it's very similar to the uh, you know the injection that you put in your blood that you take one dose of you're highly addicted on it that uh, gangs in Europe from Albania use on girls that they kidnap in Europe and turn them into forced, you know. Um, so I was like, oh, but I sort of also see the, uh, in-world parallels and I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, like really dark stuff, really dark stuff. And there was also mentioned that a lot of people found that episode, uh, very uncomfortable and hated that episode. And my response to that is you shouldn't hate the episode, but the content within the episode should make you feel uncomfortable. And that's the point, because what's happening in the episode isn't okay. It isn't okay. Uh, which is why it's important to put it out in the open, because by pretending something doesn't exist, it basically, you know, uh, puts it under the carpet or like, you know, like hides it somewhere and allows it to continue. So... I don't have anything against it. Like, even I was a little bit going, whoa, this this went real. This got very real and raw. Uh, and I wasn't expecting it to go that way. But again, I'm in full support of having those moments within shows like this to highlight very real issues that exist in the world. That shouldn't be okay. Um, but again, the internet being the internet, it's filled with people that feel entitled that Things should be the way that they want them. And if they're not, it should change to accommodate what they want. Despite them in no way contributing to the development of the show. And I think they should go F themselves. <laughs> That's just my honest opinion. But by all means, feel free to type it in the chat. I'm reading the chat. Feel free to post it in the comments of the videos on YouTube and uh, Patreon. I do read them. I do respond. I do love a good uh, conversation, a good discussion. But as always, please no spoilers because I'm enjoying this show blind. And so far, I'm loving it. Uh, another detail that was pointed out uh, was that uh, Adam, during his meeting... Uh, with, oh my god, if I forget her name, I'm so screwed, uh, was actually eating ribs. He was eating ribs. And that flew over my head, even though I mentioned that Eve was made from Adam's rib. Like, right? I should have picked up on that. But he was eating ribs! Uh, Charlie, thank you. I'm trying to remember as many names as possible, which is why I'm using character names. But then the really obvious ones escape me for some reason, which doesn't make any sense. You would think if I'm remembering the names of minor characters, I'd easily remember the names of the main ones, but unfortunately not. And another part was that, uh, remember how uh, Adam was playing the prank on Charlie by like, do you want some? And then she tries to grab it and her hand goes through the hologram. At the end, he grabs her and pushes her out, meaning that at any point he could have physically manifested in the room with Charlie, but he simply chose not to, uh, which again is a power play, you know? So he can interact with objects in that space using the hologram without physically being present. It's, it's real. The, these are really, really minor details, which I think could play a bigger part in the overall plot. And you might think, what is the significance of a person being able to interact with an environment using a hologram? And I will give you one. During the purge, he could use the hologram that can interact with the environment to take part in the purge without being physically present or risking he himself being injured during the purge. So again, another minor detail that could have repercussions later on, you know? 
You could think, hey, that's Adam, I'm going to take him out, and you realize that's a hologram. Meanwhile, he's able to interact with the environment around him, meaning he could probably wield a weapon and kill people. So, you see how such a little tiny minor detail could have such a massive implication down the road. I, it, that's why I like this show, it's actually well thought out, and these little things are consistent. They're not like, whoops, that was a mistake, you know, and we're just gonna retro it or like, you know, uh, rewrite it later. It's like, no, 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 it's consistent from the beginning. Yeah, there's some character redesigns from the pilot to the actual show, but give me a show where the pilot didn't have slight modifications before episode one came out. A contradiction to what his song was saying makes sense. Well, like, we see that the angels and some people in heaven are, for one, hypocrites. Uh, and two, not necessarily good, you know? So, yeah. And we have been told in Hell of a Boss that angelic weapons could hurt demon royalty, but they haven't shown how to kill angels. Adam isn't a coward, he is just smart. Well, like, that also comes into another thing, right? Uh, we know angelic weapons, you know, you would assume angelic weapons are more powerful than conventional weapons when used against demons. Like, holy water hurts demons, so you would think angelic weapons would be super effective. Uh, but the fact that they could take out demon royalty is like a level above that. The real question comes down to, can they take down fallen angels? Which form the devils, you know, obviously Lucifer and other fallen angels. Can the angelic weapons harm fallen angels? If they can, angelic weapons can also potentially harm angels. See where I'm going with this? So, question mark. Question mark. You know, there's a lot of really good things. Uh, Hoy soy latino, why me gustan tus reacciones? I'm... Guessing that you, uh, that you're Latino and you're here for the reactions. I don't speak, but I tried to read it. Hopefully I didn't butcher it, so hello. <laughs> Funny, you saw Lucifer. I think we all saw Lucifer. Yeah, he's apparently shorter than you would think, but he wears white. Which I think is a bit of a play on Supernatural, where Lucifer, when he takes physical form, he wears a white suit. Everyone's always expecting Lucifer to wear like a black suit and all this sort of stuff. But like in Supernatural, he wears a white suit, you know, which is like, oh, why is he wearing a white suit? I personally wouldn't. It gets really dirty easily. But like, I like these little things. I like these little things. So let's kick off episode five. We'll watch also episode six. We'll see when it gets uploaded on YouTube. I'm currently fighting the DMCA for episode one and two on YouTube. But as always, everything is available on Twitch VODs as well as Patreon. Okay. He has his ideology that he obtains eye for an eye, but his actions and behavior reflect opposite. However, yes, you could see it. Be coward or smart. Eye for an eye implies that the angels lost eyes, which they didn't. They lost one head after they killed how many thousand people. So, like, the whole eye for an eye thing, while I do understand the Old Testament implication of that, uh, he's kind of using it out of context. Right? Like... He's kind of using it out of context. Like, if the angels were just chilling, right? And someone killed an angel, I could completely understand that the angels would want to find and murder the person that killed the angel. And they might kill a bunch of people on the way to obtain that information. That I would understand. But if the angels are doing, like, a yearly purge, like it's a Hollywood movie, right? Uh, and one of them gets shot down. It's like, oh, an eye for an eye. It's like, hang on. You're already killing so many people. Uh, it's it's not exactly an eye for an eye, right? I've been told that they try to make every demon lord a circus theme. I, I, I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. And it also, I think I read somewhere that uh, sinners that go to hell are more powerful than devil spawn or like people that are born in hell. Like the imps, for example. So all these powerful demons that we see in hell are actually sinners that have died. And they receive a demonic form based on their life and how they died and all these other things. Um, but apparently they are confined to the upper level of hell, which is the pride circle? The pride realm? The pride ring? Um, where Lucifer is, you know, the one and only. Um, but then the rings below that, you know, like Envy, Sloth, Wrath, all that good stuff, um, 
the people that are born in hell can traverse, whereas sinners cannot. So during the purge, people that are born in hell, not necessarily people that were sent there, can actually leave the pride ring so they don't get killed. They don't get culled. Whereas sinners that, you know, lived, made their choices, got sent to hell, are basically stuck in the circle of pride. Uh, and they are potential casualties of this perch, you know? So, like, yeah. But an, an interesting thing for me is, it's like, okay, if you're born in hell, you're basically screwed, like, from the beginning. Not only are you in hell, but you are weaker than malicious, malignant people that were sent to hell. And they don't give a crap about you anyway. So if you're born in hell, you're kind of screwed, right? Uh, whereas all these sinners, they're sent to hell. But is it really a punishment? Because they're kind of doing what they've always done. They're just surrounded by other people that do similar things, you know? So it kind of turns into a free-for-all who for who's the biggest psychopath out of the bunch. Which is where you get the overlords and whatnot. And obviously the overlords themselves screw themselves over. And then eventually you get someone like Alistair that's just so malicious... That he's able to even take out overlords and enslave them and do all this other stuff. So, like, it's a matter of inevitability in that case. Um, but then you consider the pride ring being locked during the purge and being purged by the angels. Like, who are they purging? They're purging these, like, powerful individuals that were sent to hell. Some of which are getting more and more power. Which is why when you see someone like, I forgot his name, but we saw him in the previous episode. Uh who's one of the oldest uh, devils, the old, one of the oldest overlords, it's kind of like, okay, the ones that came around that time were probably already killed. The ones that came earlier were probably already killed or didn't amass much power. So clearly this purge is actually working in weakening... Zestiel, thank you. In weakening the people there. Because you take a look at some of the overlords, they're fairly young. Like, you have that girl that's a Junko and a Shima wannabe... She's apparently fairly recent because she's using, like, Twitter and Instagram, right? Like, that's within the last five, six years, maybe ten years. She's fairly recent. Whereas Zestiel is using old-school English that we haven't seen since Shakespeare. Mind you, he could even be older than that. So, when you really think about it, he's one of the few entities that has been around for a while that was sent down to hell that hasn't been expunged. And was able to, you know, solidify power, get souls, and do this thing. And even he's like, hang on, we shouldn't just be gun ho and try to fight the angels. Because that's probably happened once or twice. And it ended horribly, you know? So clearly, like, this purge actually works. And this purge could have started after an uprising took place where the people sent to hell decided to try to see if they could fight heaven. And of course... Uh, if we, you know, listen to the old story of how it happened originally when Lucifer was cast down, he started with a rebellion, taking one third of heaven's forces and trying to claim the throne of God. So, you know, history repeating itself or kind of rhyming in its own way, it kind of makes sense that the angels don't want to let hell grow too powerful, especially when you consider the type of individuals that are sent to hell. We're talking about psychopathic, power-hungry tyrants, serial killers, murderers, mafiosos, pimps, you know, like people that in such an environment will become stronger. Meanwhile, heaven is probably going to have more pacifist people. So in a sheer numbers game, uh, individuals sent to hell would fare a lot better in an all-out war than people in heaven. So, of course, there's going to be a culling. Of course, there's going to be a purge. It's a matter of survival. But again, this makes the show well thought out. It actually has some historical revel uh, relevance and uh, politics behind the scenes. So when they're doing the world building, it actually makes sense from a logical point of view. You know, it's not some crap that they pulled out of their ass that doesn't make any sense. It actually makes perfect sense. That's why the purge is necessary. The hell people goal is to take over heaven and the world they assume while heaven is the opposite. Yeah, exactly. So, of course, we don't know heaven, what it's like. We've seen uh, the cherubs in one of the Hell of a Boss episodes and they weren't exactly the most friendly, but again, they are OP as shit. So that might come with a little bit of pride and arrogance, but again, those are supposed to be deadly sins. So why do you have pride and arrogance? But then again, you look Old Testament God that quite literally... 
you know, makes people poop out their insides if they make fun of him or kills their firstborn if they don't follow an order, you know? So, like, Old Testament God is pretty wrathful. Like, just read the Old Testament. He's wrathful as hell, you know? He could flood the whole planet and kill a bunch of people, but it's okay because he's God, right? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pretty interesting. Anyway, let's jump into episode 5. Again, I like the show. I love it. Let's just continue. Let's discuss it. Let's have fun. I like it. I like it. I said it from the beginning. It's an interesting new IP that has a lot of potential. I just hope it doesn't get... What's the word I'm looking for? Corrupted. Corrupted. There's a lot of uh, shows that eventually get corrupted. They get signed on by a network, they grow too big, and the only way for them to continue is to lose the very thing that made them unique in the first place. They kind of become woke, they kind of go broke, and they kind of try to lecture you, and then they just die out, and they become the very thing they vowed to destroy. Which is why anytime there's a show that's not like that, is a lot more raw, like South Park. I absolutely love it and I jump behind it. Uh, so I hope this show continues to be the way that it is and it doesn't become like that. Why are the subtitles in French? Great, the subtitles are in French. I only have French subtitles. It looks like we're watching without subtitles. Sorry, people watching on YouTube. If there's any audio cut, there's nothing I can do. French. Was this, was this recorded in French? Someone in France ripped the DVD. Sorry, the Amazon Prime. Well, thank you, French. No, add French. Can someone actually read French? <laughs> no, add French. All right. Have I seen any clips? No. It's blind. You need to practice your French. Okay. I'm not against it. Could be funny. Could be pretty funny, actually. Oh my god, she's doing the meme. She's gonna do the meme, isn't she? She's gonna be the meme. I love it. What is the point of French subtitles if the French subtitles don't even appear? it was gonna be to ask Alastor for suggestions, but his suggestions may involve evisceration, so that's probably a good idea. And I love how the on the board is a pentagram, like, <laughs> you know, like father, like daughter, right? Charlie, I know you don't want to, but we need every advantage we can get. He let the extermination happen to begin with! They just had a meeting and said, go ahead and kill everyone! <gasps> Wait, that's it! I like this mug, F Mondays. I'm 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 on I'm on board with Garfield here. Kill everyone? No. Actually, Satan is different to Lucifer. Satan is from the word Shaitan, which means the accuser. Oh, he could get me a meeting with heaven. Didn't we already try that? Well, yeah, with Adam, he was an asshole, but he isn't in charge of all of heaven. We could go to the top. I'm pretty sure Adam isn't in charge of any of heaven. Wait a minute, how the hell did Adam get back into heaven? There's sure to be some angels who will listen. Why did Twitch just try to censor them fail? Because apparently them is assuming someone's pronouns. Apparently. The world has gotten really weird. What's your contact list? Dad? Egg? 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 Oh my god, that is so clu uh, cute. Sich Weirach. What the hell is that? What's the holdup? You got daddy issues? No, we just have never been close. That sounds like daddy issues, and the bartender made fun of her daddy issues. After he and mom split, he never really wanted to see me. Wait, he and Lilith split? 
He calls, sometimes, but only if he's bored or, or like, needs me to do something. Wow. Bad issues. Well, I'd like to meet the big dick in charge. The <laughs> ultimate bad boy. <laughs> Please don't try to stab Lucifer. I bet he's scary. That's it. Almost there. Please don't be jacking off. Now, presenting the magic testicle backflipping rubber duck. <laughs> This is the guy that ran a rebellion in heaven and tried to take over God's throne. Hey, he's got an apple on his hat. That's cute. No, but seriously, this guy? That spits fire! Okay, that's a little bit better. What the hell is this? I can see why she left you. Who's this guy? What is this, Homestuck? Okay, I see interrogation tools here. That's fair enough. Little baby photos of Charlie. I'm guessing this is Lilith. I mean, they look like a happy family. What's wrong with that? And is that Charlie going through an emo face? Oh my God, did Charlie go through an emo face? That is adorable. So she basically went through a phase and now she overcorrected and went in the opposite direction. Wait, so to them, this is probably a phase. She went through an emo phase, and now she's going through a goody-goody phase. Please, God, do not give me a daughter. <laughs> Hold the applause, please. Okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Oh, God, who am I kidding? This sucks. What the hell? Hey, look, he's got, like, apples everywhere. My God, he's bored. That's your ring for- oh my god. Daughter- daughter calling! Oh! Um, uh, what a, what a... Wait, he's still wearing his wedding ring. Why are you wearing your wedding ring if you're divorced? Oh, Charlie. Hey, hey. Oh, no, 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 I think he's wearing it on his pinky, which is what people wear when they basically say I'm not getting married, but I'm being gangster. But you already were married, so you can't wear it, you're not gangster. Hey, church her. No, no, that's not good. Oh, this is the first time she's called you. This has to be perfect. Hey, bitch! Hi, Dad! Did you just call her a bitch? Hey, how are you? <laughs> where, where, where are you these days? You know where I am, Dad. I've told you before. You have? Oh, yeah, uh... Yeah. Well, you know, I, um... Uh... I told you when you called me five months ago? Or did you not listen? No, 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 no. Just... Wait, were you drunk dialing? Oh my god, he's even got an apple... This guy, this, 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 this guy, wow, reliving plus, uh, past glories. I just forgot, you know, I've just been really busy, you know? Oh, I get why Adam will never want to negotiate with Lucifer. Because Lucifer stole his girl. It's about a woman, it, it's always about a woman. It's not even about the purge. It's because that guy stole his girl. I get it. Wow, that is so basic. So this shit has been happening since literally the beginning of time. Wow. See, I could see why he would wear this if he meets Adam. It's just to remind him that, ha! You know, you got screwed over by an apple. Ergo, I screwed you. But, like, at a certain point, you gotta let it go. Like... You gotta let it go. Adam is an incel. Well, he does purge. I was never close from my dad. We have pictures that prove the opposite. See, the one thing that I've learned about photos like this is that you don't see what happens before and after the photos. Can we have a male beach tail test where a man goes five minutes talking about something with a woman involved? I have no idea what that is. But we have plenty of women in the chat, trust me. No, with, um, important things? Well, I'm actually running a hotel to rehabilitate sinners. Maybe you saw our commercial. Oh, sadly, I missed it. <laughs> you know, I haven't been watching much TV lately. Scrambles the brain. <laughs> but hey, a hotel, fun. <sighs> Listen, Dad, I've got kind of a big ask. <gasps> yeah, of course. Anything in my power is yours for the asking, you just name it. 
I need to speak to heaven. Well, whoever's in charge up there, above Adam, above anybody, I need to go to the top. Oh, no. no. <laughs> so basically, Charlie is asking her dad to talk to her dad. Sorry, Charlie asking her dad to talk to his dad. So basically, Lucifer just has daddy issues. Wow. And he's a parent. Wow. No, 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 Charlie, no, no, no. How much you want to bet that Dusk is just going to have Lucifer drinking at his bar talking about his problems? Because Lucifer strikes me as the type of person that just needs someone to talk to. That's, uh, no. Look, Dad, I don't ask you for much. I never have, but this, this is really important to me. It's Why do I feel like hell is just filled with people with daddy issues? The most important thing I've ever done, and I need you. I need your help. Uh, I don't know. Charlie. Please, just come see what I'm trying to do. See, this is really cute. She's actually supporting her. Which is very unusual for people in hell. You'll see why it's a really good idea, and heaven is bound to agree if I get the chance to talk to them. Please, Dad. Wait, you're inviting me over? He is a child. Absolutely! Oh, I'll be there in an hour! My daughter wants to see me! Take that depression! Well, we see, I told you! We have an hour until he gets here. Okay, people, Lucifer is on his way, so we are gonna get this place presentable and we are going to make an amazing impression. Vamanos! Are they baking hash brownies? <sighs> okay, everyone! It's showtime! Oh god, Alistair's gonna do something. This is gonna be a thing. Oh god. Oh god, this is gonna be a thing. Okay, here we go. Charlie! Hey, Dad! Oh, it's so good to see you! <laughs> oh god, look at the way Alistair is like, Jesus Christ. This is... This is a thumbnail. I'm... I'm... This, this is probably a thumbnail. Just... This... This pretty much says it all. Look at the way his eye is twitching. He's barely containing himself. Ay, 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 ay. It's uh, good to see you too, Dad. <sighs> <clears throat> Welcome to the Has Been Hotel. Oh, hey, whoa, Kiki. Okay, he's an animal person. I can accept this. Wait, you know these people? You taking care of my widow girl? You better be. <laughs> wow, this place sure looks uh uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's got a lot of character. Oh! What in the unholy hell is that? Just some of the renovations we had done. Adds a bit of color, don't you think? And you are? Alistair, pleasure to be meeting you, sir. Quite a pleasure. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. You are much shorter in real life. Ooh, he's already, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this This is, yeah, th there's already a power struggle happening here. Who is this? Who is this? Man? Are you the bellhop? Aha, no! I am the host of the hotel. You might have heard of me from my radio broadcast. Hmm. Nope! I guess that's why Charlie called it the Has Been Hotel. <laughs> See, he's trying to bounce back. Oh my god, I can't believe you're doing this. Why is the king of hell doing this? Ha ha ha! It was actually my idea. Ha <laughs> ha Well, it's not very clever. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck you. Okay. Wow. See, you know, like, what's happening here isn't two people... Locking horns with each other like two rams or two bulls because that would imply that they're on equal footing We're talking about a literal archangel That has been around since the beginning of time itself Locking horns with some random human that has literally died and got sent to hell. That's the equivalent of me arguing with an ant Like me going outside and arguing with an ant and the ant winning it's pretty fucking embarrassing. 
Like, you can't win. Even if you win, you lose because you're arguing with an ant. You just step on an ant. Okay, anyway... Dad! Look at this lovely parlor where people can get to know each other and share... Is that a glory hole? Secrets and stories and intimate feelings? Oh god, it is a glory hole. Without Alistair, we wouldn't have been able to pretty it up this much. Charlie has a very unique vision. I am happy to fulfill her bizarre requests. Oh, thank you, Alistair. See, that's a power play. It's like, I can touch your daughter. Like, this is psychopathic to the max. And if daddy lashes out, he looks like he's unstable. Quite an impressive young lady. We're all very proud of her. Oh, God. This is just... Oh, God. He knows what he's doing. <clears throat> Charlie, dear, <laughs> why don't you introduce me to your other friends? Oh, yes, of course. This is Maggie. She's my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, my golly. You like girls. Yes, so do I. We have so much in common. You put her there, Maggie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not even a parent, and I'm already face palming. <laughs> She's so pretty. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, uh, sir. And Please don't hit on your daughter's girlfriend. Please don't hit on your daughter's girlfriend. Please don't hit on your daughter's girlfriend. This is Sir Pentius and Angel Dust, our guests. Your Majesty! Hey, you short king. Oh, God! Husk is our bartender, and Nifty is our housekeeper. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Queen. <laughs> 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 Who the fuck is that? Who? I mean, for a second I was gonna say Lilith really let herself go, but like... Thank god that's not Lilith. Didn't you just hear me? Why is everybody gawking? Is it cause I'm adorable? Mimsy! Alistair! Sweetie Dolphin, so good to see you! How you been? Good? Good. <laughs> Listen, I was in the neighborhood. I heard you were staying at this ritzy slob factory, and I figured I'd stop- Wait, what was that sigil tattoo that she had on her right shoulder? I don't recognize it. You see, every demon and archangel and everything has a sigil. Lucifer's one is this cute thing which is like almost like a triangle with these little things and with a little M on top. This one I don't recognize. 
Mammon. Oh. What does Mammon do again? Bob Factory, and I figured I'd stop by. Say hi for old time's sake. Of course, sweetheart. Every Great, I get you. Everyone is welcome here. Oh, how nice. So you two know each other? Oh, yeah, we go way back. We ran in the same circles when we were alive. You know, this one used to frequent the club where I used to perform. He's the only one I knew who could found whiskey like a sailor then keep up with me on the dance floor. Oh, quite a talent, this gal. <laughs> you should have seen her in her heyday. Hey, watch it, tall, dark, and creepy. I'm still in my prime. Oh, oh, my stars. <gasps> Move it! Please to meet you, your highness. Alistair, you gotta warn a girl when she's in mixed company. Charmed, I'm sure. As much as I'd love to catch up, Charlie and I have a tour to continue. I'm sure Charlie can handle showing me around. Uh, nonsense! We started the hotel together, and we'll show it off together. Right, Charlie? Oh! Right. Why don't you let the others help you settle in, and I'll be back before you know it. So, where can a girl get a drink around here? <laughs> my, my, is that Husker? Alice still has you slinging hooch from my seat. <laughs> Classic. How you been, Furball? Good. Until five minutes ago. Oh, don't tell me you're not happy to see me. You might hurt my feelings. <laughs> hey, Nifty, what you been up to, girly? Fighting bugs. And, uh, how's that going for you? They're winning. <laughs> but not for long. <laughs> oh, okay. uh -huh. Thanks, pussycat. Oh, fuck you. So, uh, you and Alistair are like, what? Friends? Well, that's your word, not mine. But I think it fits. <laughs> Wait, so Alistair knew Mammon all the way when he was a human. So not only was he doing questionable deeds he was also communicating with devils oh yeah that explains a lot no wonder he became so powerful when he got sent to hell mimsy is in mammon oh we met mammon say i'm shit with names mimsy is associated with mammon here not sure about alistair cool is the french sub translating well i have no idea mammon's the green clown why is he Australian, though? Why so surprised? I just didn't know he had any of those. He's been here a while and is still a big creepy mystery. What's his deal? Well, you probably heard the stories. He appeared in hell suddenly, making a splash quicker than anyone had ever seen. At first, people wanted to dismiss him. But soon, overlords started going missing. And not small ones, <laughs> We're talking... Heavy hitters. No one knew what happened to him until these strange radio broadcasts started going out. All you could hear was screams. Every time an overlord went missing, there'd be a new voice screaming in the broadcast. That's when Alistair revealed himself as the radio demon. And anyone that would mess with him... <laughs> well, let's just say... His broadcast never lacked new voices. That's the story most people know. But underneath it all... He's a total sweetie. Put on some jazz and pour a couple fingers of rye and he becomes a kitten. Stop with the looks. He, he doesn't sound so bad. Hasn't done any of that in a while. Can I get another one of these? I mean, he got bored after a while. There's only so many things you can do to the human body. Play some jazz, give me some whiskey, and he becomes a kitten. Mmm, very classy. But once we have the proof that redemption is possible, this whole hotel will be full of demons wanting to check out into heaven. Wait, so you want proof that redemption is possible? So you know redemption is possible, or you're assuming redemption is possible? We just need a little more time to prove it. The sharing service hey, haven't been working as fast as I hoped, but I'm thinking that What is it? You and I both know Mimsy only shows up when she needs something. That bitch is trouble. And who knows what kind of demon she fucked with to come running to you this time. It's nothing I can't handle. Don't worry, Husker. Who in their right mind would cross me? I mean, you've been gone a while. And it's not...
Not like anybody knows why. And they don't need to know. And don't you worry your fuzzy head about it. You may own my soul, but I ain't your fucking pet. <laughs> but you are. <laughs> Big talk for someone who's also on a leash. Uh, what did you say? Whose leash? Nothing. I, um... <clears throat> if you ever say that again, I will tear your soul apart and broadcast your screams for every other disrespectful wretch who dares to question me. Understood. Lovely. Ah, good talk, my good man. Always nice to catch up. And we've almost been able to find all of Angel's drug stashes. Almost. Drugs? Oh, once that's out of the way, it should be much smoother sailing. I mean, if someone actually... Oh, see, like, hmm. See, if Alistair was messing with the occult while he was alive, it would make sense that once he got sent to hell, he'd be crazy strong. But that would also mean that any deals that you made while you were alive are still in effect once you're dead. It kind of makes sense. You sell your soul, you sell your soul. But if that person is still around, it means that that person is stronger than Alistair. And considering that he's toppling overlords like nobody's business, it would have to be someone significant. Possibly fallen angel level. Like OGs. Well, that certainly is, uh, is, is something. So, what do you think? About what? Wait, but then why would you be making enemies with Lucifer? Like, shouldn't you be trying to be best friends with Lucifer if someone in hell owns your soul? I don't know. You think it's Lilith? That could get messy super quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. It, do it does look much better now, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, but I'm thinking this railing needs work. One good push, and you just go right over the edge. Whoopee. Bye-bye. <laughs> what? No, no, the plan, Dad. What do you think about using the hotel to help sinners? Uh... All right. I mean, look, I love that you want to see the best in people, but these sinners, you know, they're just the worst. I, I don't know how much you can realistically expect from them in heaven. <laughs> oh, boy. Heaven is not exactly as carefree as you might think. Yeah, they have rules. Lots of rules. And they aren't very open-minded, as you'd hope. These are our people, Dad. I, I have to try. Our people, Charlie, are awful. They got gifted free will, and look what they did with it. Everything's terrible. <laughs> I just don't want you to put yourself on the line for people like that. Jeez, ah, what now? Well, like that. Fancy, we know you're in there, you lousy bitch. Oh, shit. Que carajo, what's going on? I may be in trouble with some loan sharks. I may or may not have borrowed 50 grand from me. Only 50 grand? Yeah, that kind of becomes personal. And crashed it. If you crashed my car, I'd kill you. Didn't you the loan shark's girlfriend, but that bitch had it coming. That explains it. Charlie, you build something nice, you invite people in and offer them everything, and they just bring violence and chaos to your doorstep. Says the archangel that literally started a rebellion in heaven. It doesn't matter how well-intentioned you are, they're always gonna disappoint you! A little bit like a certain archangel that was given free will in heaven? Uh, if you're coming along, uh, all of you get a safe distance. Wait, is that an angelic spear, or is that just a normal spear? I'll take care of this. Now, my dear, leave it to me. It's time I remind everyone why I am here. Ugh, finally! Took you long enough! A reminder to all! 
not to mess with the radio demon. Wait, are you Slender Man? You're reminding me of Slender Man. Sinners are violent psychopaths, hell-bent on causing as much pain and destruction as they can. There's really no point in trying. Dad, stop! He's defending this hotel! It may be a bit more sadistic than I'd hoped, but he's doing it for me! You know, Hutchin uses the exact same rationale. I find it adorable! I knew I should have brought popcorn. Oh! I missed getting to let off steam! Oh, Alistair, what a fantastic show! Bravo, as always! Thanks for helping little old me out of a tough spot. You're always such a pal. Oops! <laughs> Sorry about the mess, but I'm sure the little bug can take care of it for you. I think you should go, Mimsy. Now. Oh. You're such a kid of you. <laughs> you are so funny. I mean it. You deliberately brought danger to this place just to have me clean up your mess. I can't have that here. But you love taking care of me. What? You don't actually give a shit about this tacky place, do ya? Come on. I know you. You heartless son of a bitch. You are welcome if you actually want to give redemption a shot. But I think we both know that's not really your style. So you need to leave. Well, fine. Who needs ya? Have fun with your little princess and your little hotel. See if I can. <laughs> this is really getting good. Dad, just help me. I... I can't. Did you notice that? That was so artistic. Look at this. Look at this shit. Charlie's background is pure light. The light is shining in from behind Charlie. Lucifer is facing the opposite direction at the pitch black. Like, it's the little shit! I know most people don't give a shit, but it's the little shit! I... I can't. Why can't you? Charlie! Another song? Seriously? Another song? <sighs> you don't understand. Heaven never listens. They didn't listen to me. <laughs> they won't listen to you. You don't know that. I do.
Why the hell was Lilith pulling Charlie away from her father? He wasn't doing anything wrong. He was spending time with his daughter. It almost feels like Lilith had him shut up in his room, tried to separate him from his daughter, and he got depressed as a result. That doesn't seem like a very happy family situation. This is why I was saying I don't trust the photos on the wall, because you don't know what happened before and afterwards. Everyone could be smiling in the photos, but you don't actually know what's going on. Oh, that was sweet. Okay, I can get you the meeting, but once you're in heaven, I won't be able to go with you. Will you be okay? I'll be fine. That's my girl. Good luck, kiddo. This next part is gonna be... scary. You ready? I'm ready. Cause you'll be with me. In spirit, right? In heaven. Yay! <laughs> I mean, Charlie might have some leeway because you know there's gonna be a meeting set up but this plus one is like who the hell are you you know what i mean like charlie might get a free pass in and out for a meeting but you know what i mean charlie's only like mid-20s too so she's pretty recent in lucifer and Lilith's relationship well i could sort of See, I can, I, I can sort of get that, right? Like, if we're going to take at face value everything that's being said and assume that Lucifer did have the best of intentions and Heaven was this very autocratic... Let's call it... Uh, dictatorship. It would make sense. And if he gives humans free will, and then they abuse it, and they become horrible, and all the bad ones basically get sent to hell as a way to teach them a lesson, it's like, okay, you want humans to have free will? Let me show you why this is a horrible idea. And we'll take the good ones, but you can have all the bad ones, and you can be surrounded by a reminder of why this was not a good idea. That would be a punishment. And you might think, oh, that's a bit cruel. But you, we need to take into consideration that angels, archangels, God, and all these other things, they're celestial beings that are virtually immortal. Time, like thousands of years, is nothing. It's a, it's a blink of an eye, right? So, God being a parent would make sense in punishing Lucifer this way. He's not, like, hitting him. He's not abusing him. He's not doing any... He's doing the equivalent of, okay, you don't want to play by my rules. You can leave my house. Go live in your own shithole and run it however you want to run it, right? And so Lucifer's in charge of hell, but he's being flooded with all these sinners. And they're stuck in his ring. They're stuck in his realm. He can't leave. They can't leave. And so he's constantly being reminded by the mistake and the repercussions of it. And you can kind of see the way he looks at these sinners. He's like, they're not worth saving. They're horrible, psychopathic, cruel people. And he even said himself, they got free will and look what they did with it, right? So if you look at it this way, it, like you look at him as almost an individual and you go like, well... He had the best intentions, but the path to hell is paved in good intent. And here we are. And then you've got Charlie, that, who's this girl that's born in hell. But look at her spirit. She's very innocent. She's very optimistic. She's very good. She probably embodies all the good that Lucifer had in him, but is in a really, really bad spot. Because, you know, obviously hell. So, you could see him, like... He doesn't want her to be shot down like he was. He doesn't want to go through that rejection. He doesn't want her to go through that reality check. He doesn't want her to go through any of the pain associated with it, right? He's, he's being kind of like a dad wanting to protect her. But in the same sense, if you overprotect her, you know, she's kind of going to be useless. So she needs to do some things on her own. But I like that he pushes back 
he doesn't, you know, he pushes back. And it's like, it's not a good idea. I already tried this. I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into, you know, all these things. And she pushes back on that no and makes it really clear that it's something she's got to do. That's something she wants to do. And she wants his support. And he sort of goes, well, I'm going to support you in whatever you're doing. I don't think it's a good idea. But since it means so much to you, I'm going to support you. Even though I don't think it's going to work out. But I will give you that shot. And he's even like, good luck. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of those, the bird's leaving the nest. The bird needs to flap its wings and fly. If it doesn't, it's just going to be stuck in the nest. And, you know, like, that's that's a bad situation. The bird needs to learn how to fly, right? So I kind of like it. I like the relationship and the characterization. And I also like the fact that I have to think back and go like, okay, what, what type of Lucifer are we dealing with here? You know, Wh which stories can we actually uh, base his history on? And, and it's probably only something we're going to find out through the series itself. Um, because, you know, every character is unique in their own way. But I like it. I like it. <clears throat> Charlie seems to be all the good of Lucifer and Lilith put into one being. Possible. I missed the part when you were talking about Lilith and Lucifer's relationship. Can you put that part on YouTube, please? I'll try to put the episode on YouTube, but like all things, it might get DMC8. But it will be up on VODs and Patreon. Do we really have free will when we're expected to behave a certain way, otherwise we suffer forever? See, that's, that's, that's the real question. It's like, it's free will, but if you don't do what I like, you're going to get punished for it. And then you have to consider the people in heaven. Are they in heaven because they willingly want to follow uh, the desires of God? Or do they simply fear the repercussions of not doing so? Are they genuinely good people or are they just afraid of being punished? Hmm? You know your thought on Lilith and the info about Lilith makes me think more of my theory that Alistair might be tied to Lilith, since info has said that both of them have been said to have been gone for seven years. Well, seven years being seven being the number of God and all this sort of other stuff. It's possible. It could be coincidence. It might not be coincidence. I don't know. Uh, but if a demon of Alistair's caliber has his soul owned by someone, that someone would have to be more powerful than him otherwise it wouldn't make sense but considering he's overpowering overlords i think it's probably one of the ogs it would have to be see that's the thing because alistair is a high executioner of a hell and former angel alistair must be a completely different character uh it's such a huge part of theological discussions about being good what is being good like i remember having this whole discussion at like school and doing uh, essays and things like that, but it, it, it's this huge thing that you need to unpack. What is good and why is it good? Lucifer did say there are a lot of rules in heaven, most almost no rules in hell. Well, what is free will? Do whatever you want freely. There is chaos now. If Adam is anything to go by, I'd say the latter. Mm. The problem is that heaven probably is filled with nice people, not good people. Or it's filled with very compliant people. Do this. Yes, sir. Don't do this. Yes, sir. You know? Almost like NPCs. They don't think for themselves. Almost like people without free will. Uh, the problem is that heaven probably is filled with nice people. Read that one. Since thinking about that as info, it kind of makes sense that Alistair shows back when Charlie reveals the idea for the hotel on TV. Like my theory being that if Lilith sent Alistair to protect Charlie or something. It's entirely possible. Um, I think during Lucifer's singing, he was like patting those two little flying demons with the horns. I don't know if those are like buzzing around Charlie. Um, but then at the same time, I think Charlie herself probably has enough firepower to protect herself if the need arose. At the same time, I think he'd be more worried about her being taken advantage of. I don't know if it is possible for a lesser demon to make a deal with Charlie for her soul or something. And even if they did, I don't know if Lucifer has the power to undo that. That's the real mechanism that makes me curious about the world of Husband Hotel when it comes to deals for your soul. So remember when we had uh, Vaggy? 
Vaggy tried to film Alistair and he got upset and he made a deal with her that he'll help her film the commercial in exchange for her never trying that again. And that seems really innocent, right? Like, oh, never annoy me again and I will do this for you. But what if the only way to take down Alistair is using a video camera? And by Vaggy promising never to t try that again, she now cannot do anything to Alistair. See, so something seemingly innocent that's minor could be something much bigger later on when we have additional context. Uh, there's a fan fantastic book that unpacks morality called The Moral Landscape, which attempts to use science to explain the social structure of human beings and how we speak about morality. That is interesting. I'm gonna have to look into that. Just like the cherub, when the accidentally did a sin and can't go back to heaven. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, you do any sin, you can't go to heaven. Whoops. Razzle and Dazzle, Charlie's little red thingies are bodyguards Lucifer gave her. I'm willing to bet those are like bodyguards that Lucifer himself has. More like to help her with the hotel, I mean. I say angels are good people, just not nice. And some angel get rotten. That's why the angel we see are bad. I'm sure next episode the angels are good. Well, like all things, you'll have good and bad. And then you'll have people that follow the rules, but they follow them nicely. And then there's people that follow the rules, but they follow them maliciously. When Vox was looking through the cameras at the hotel, Alistair was on the screen, but he was heavily distorted and hard to see. Mm. I really need to know what Alistair's deal is. Now, before this episode, there wasn't really a question of whether he genuinely cared or was just messing with everyone slash doing things for some evil plan. Now I legit wonder. Well, everyone describes Alistair as an enigma and a mystery. No one actually knows what he's up to. Uh, even Zestiel doesn't want to ponder what's going on in Alistair's head. When Alistair threatened Husk, it was so menacing. There is a reason he is my favorite character. Well, th you can only threaten a person like that if you have a reputation. And his reputation is literally torturing people. And so through reputation, you don't want to get on such a person's bad side. Whereas if he had absolutely no reputation at all, you would be a little bit more audacious and not as fearful. Like, look at the way Alistair talks to Lucifer. Lucifer could probably snap his fingers and Alistair would be cut up into a million pieces. Of course, that wouldn't kill him, but, you know, Lucifer could torture him if he wanted to. But because Lucifer's reputation isn't for doing so, Alistair feels comfortable insulting him like that in front of his daughter. You know what I mean? So, it, there's a lot going on. It's oddly pleasant those demon cherub thingies Razzle and Dazzle has names for some reason. Well, those could have been cherubs. And they're just fallen cherubs. Cherubs are just an order of angels. I believe they're the ones that protect God's throne. And if we take the story that Lucifer got 30% of heaven's forces, we can assume that he got a few cherubs on his side. I mean, Lucifer himself is an archangel. They were in the pilot playing piano for Charlie. I find that cute. I find that cute. Maybe they're cherubs Lucifer brought with him. Very possible. They could basically be like his buddies from back in the old days. And he just basically said, look, look after my daughter. I can't trust anyone else. And they're like, sure. You know what I mean? Like, if you take a look at all the angels and God and everyone else as like a family unit, you would have people like Michael, Lucifer, Gabriel, and the archangels as effectively being brothers. So you've got dad that's God. You've got the brothers, which are the archangels, and the angels below them are like the little brothers and little sisters. Obviously, the big brothers are going to be physically and, you know, stronger than the little brothers and little sisters. So if you take a look at that hierarchy, the cherubs are like little brothers to Lucifer. And he's asking his little brothers to look after his daughter, but don't fuck up because I can still beat your ass. I can love Lucifer. He's so adorable and I want to protect him. Well, yeah. I mean, again, that's another thing, right? The story of Lucifer and everything that we know about him is from text and scripture uh, from the point of view of religion. And he's always painted as the enemy. So it's an interesting point of view that 
what's written and what's said might not be true. And that brings to question, okay, if that's not true, what else isn't true? Anyway, if you're into shit like that, I highly recommend something like Supernatural. That has that discussion point brought up. Because you actually get to see angels and archangels and demons and devils and all this other thing. I love the parental love in these shows. Has been and hell of a boss. Stolas, Blitz, Camilla, Lucifer. Well, that's it, right? You're looking at these people in hell that encompass good parenting better than most humans. And I would believe most angels. They genuinely love their offspring. Stolas loves his daughter. From what I see of Lucifer, he loves his daughter. Camilla loves her daughters. That's good parenting. Okay, they're bad in other aspects, but it's one of their redeeming qualities. And that's a part of humanity. Lilith and Lucifer's relationship is the best part of the Apocrypha, the book of the Bible that the Catholic Church decided shouldn't be canon. I love how the Catholic Church gets to decide what is and isn't canon, yet a lot of their popes used to get uh, carts and carts filled with prostitutes. And a lot of their cardinals are diddling little boys. You know, I've got a little bit of beef with the Catholic Church. An author simply painting art, that fits their narrative best. True. Because if you only saw five, I don't want to tread into spoiler territory. I have only seen five. Okay. Let's take a little break and watch episode 6. As always, I love these discussions! I love them! I love them! So if you're watching this later, comment. I love this shit. Actually, you should probably watch episode 6 and then comment. Because that way I will be more informed. <laughs> I love this shit. I honestly do. That's why I watch... I love anything that comes into religion. And it doesn't have to be Christian, right? I love religion. I love history. This is right up my alley. This is the type of shit that I'm into. So th th this, this tickles my fancy in many ways. Hey, did I hand you a shrinking potion by accident? I could have sworn that was the gender swapping one. Don't be hating. She's fun sized, that's all. She doesn't even have to get on her knees to blow. You want to add anything to that conversation? Nope, I'm good. In fact, I think your new size makes you an even more formidable and stealthy ninja. 